So in this video I'm going to do one of my favorite examples of indifference curve analysis where we have a good and a bad. Uh, it's going to be the choice of the optimal portfolio between a risky asset and a risk-free asset. Uh, and just sort of in general just showing how uh, one would make the trade-off and what the optimum uh, would look like if, uh, if you're a consumer who likes return but does not like risk. This is a nice video for showing why consumer theory or understanding indifference curves matters for someone who is interested in something like investments or uh, something uh, with a more business oriented approach. So ho hopefully this will sort of open your eyes to the generality of consumer theory and you'll see uh, some of the cool applications that uh, that we can that, we, that indifference curves and budget constraints have. So in this video we're going to discuss the trade-off between risk and return. Um, in particular we're going to be choosing uh, bundles of assets and maybe weights in our portfolio um, to achieve different risks and returns. And we're going to just start really simple in this video uh, just to give you a flavor for how consumer theory can actually translate into thinking about uh, how much uh, should I invest in a risky asset? Well, return we're going to think of as the average return or the expected return that we would get uh, from holding a particular asset for a specified amount of time. And the risk is going to be in the variance or the standard deviation of the return. Uh, it's common to express this in standard deviation. Um, assets that have more variability are riskier assets to hold. And so we're we're going to think of an investor who doesn't like risk, that is, it's a bad, um, but does like return, like likes assets with higher expected return. And so we think that this will be a reasonable assumption to start with. Now this risk-free asset for the, con for the duration of this example is going to have a 1% average return and no standard deviation. So it's a sure thing, uh, we'll get 1% return. Uh, this is the ING direct uh, CD or electric checking or whatever. You can get 1% return um, and you're guaranteed. It's even insured. We'll have another asset. We'll call it the risky asset and we'll say that it has an average yearly return of 5% and a stand with a standard deviation of 5%. So it's a point like bundle A. Um, with five and five. So we could choose between RF, which is the risk-free asset, or we could choose A. And it's Again, just uh, because risk is a bad and return is a good, um, we uh, bundle A represents having uh, more of a bad but also more of a good. It's not clear whether we would prefer A to RF or the other way around. I mean, one way to conceptualize this is that the sun is over here and it's not clear whether A or RF is closer to the sun before we draw some indifference curves. But first, let's try to get a sense for how to, uh, like, whether there are other options available. Um, for example, I could own asset A, or I could own uh, the risk-free asset, but I could also have a portfolio that where I have 50% uh, of it, it has asset A, and 50% is in the risk-free asset, or any other fraction for that matter. Actually, let's just think about a portfolio. We'll call it portfolio as P. Um, not to be confused with price, but think of that as a bundle that's given by a weight that's placed on the bundle A and a weight that is the rest of the portfolio is put into asset RF. So for example, if uh, we have a 50% weight, 0.5, our average return, well, that's just going to equal three because half of five plus half of one is three. And our standard deviation, um, it's a little bit more complicated if, if both assets have variability in their return. Um, that's, uh, that's something for sort of a later time. Uh, but for, for now, when you're trading off risk-free, that's zero standard deviation, and risky, uh, all you have to do is actually multiply that standard deviation of the portfolio by the weight that you put in the risky asset. Actually, this point that we just discovered here this point is right on a line, straight line, between A and RF. In fact, if I chose any other fraction between 0 and 1, any other weight to put on the risky asset in my portfolio, um, I'll just sort of move sort of closer to A. If 
it's higher or closer to RF if it's lower. And this will be essentially my bundle of opportunities. This is my opportunity set. This is like a budget constraint in the investment up, uh, in, in my decision about whether how much do I invest in this asset A. So now we have our budget constraint. Now let's now also think a little bit about, well, what do preferences look like? Well, because the sun is up here, uh, our ideal is up here where we have high return and low standard deviation, we have indifference curves that look like this, um, that look kind of like orbits around that sun. Uh, I've drawn this so that uh, we're not necessarily at an optimal point with respect to the, uh, the budget constraint. In fact, uh, bundle B is something uh, that we, we could draw an indifference curve through that bundle B, bundle of return and risk. Uh, and what we can see is that anything to the left and up is preferred to bundle B because it's more return and less risk. Anything to the uh, lower right here is going to be uh, worse than bundle B, and that's going to be... Um, that, that's because it's got more risk and lower return. And so what we can see is that the optimum is going to look something like bundle C, where we go to a tangency between our indifference curves, which are shaped like this because our ideal point is up in this region here. And it's going to be a tangency between this, uh, this line that connects our two portfolio, our two assets, um, and the indifference curve and that's going to tell us about what optimal portfolio would we select between a risky asset and a risk-free asset. So that's, that's essentially the portfolio problem. It's uh, the basis of um, the first step for how you would think about investments and how you would think about how much of your portfolio do you allocate to risky assets. Um, turns out that the uh, more, a more complicated, like the next step when you complicate it and you have more uh, risky assets, that complicates sort of your choice of where A ends up being. But event essentially, what, what you end up doing is you pick, uh, you pick a uh, portfolio of risky assets and then you call that your, uh, your asset A and then pick how much, uh, given your preferences for risk, you pick how much do I want to put into risky assets in general. And so that's, um, so this is, uh, it looks really contrived and really simple, just picking one risky asset and ris one risk-free asset. But it turns out to be a pretty important uh, example, a pretty important construct for thinking about investment portfolio theory.